Google Cloud next with Sarah, and she's going to talk to us about the talk she did about accelerating your AI with serverless. Sarah, thank you so much for being here with us and chatting with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course, it's a pleasure. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? What do you do here at Google and a little bit about your talk? Yeah, sure. I'm a developer relations engineer at Google on the serverless team. Nice. Wonderful. And your talk was? Accelerate your AI with serverless. So it was basically an overview of uh, so how Google Cloud does serverless, aka Cloud Run. And also I had uh, uh, three demos that showed how you can use Vertex AI with Cloud Run. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so in these three demos, can you walk me through what were these demos and why did you choose them specifically? Yeah, so I'll start with the why. Uh, because I wanted to show different contexts where you could use serverless or Cloud Run, where you could use a Cloud Run service with, uh, with Vertex AI or with Gemini. So the first demo was a Gemini demo and showed how to do a Cloud Run service with a Gemini, power, uh, Gemini powered chatbot. Then the second one, it was called um, very similar to the first demo, but it used function calling. So basically, LLMs can seem frozen in time based on their training data. For example, if I ask Gemini, hey, what is the uh, current weather in Seattle? It's going to say, I don't know, because uh, it's training data in April of 2023. Right. But with function calling, you could go to, like, for example, a Cloud Run service and find out what is the current weather in Seattle, which I hard-coded as 40 degrees and rainy, because that is the only, yeah, ask me how I feel about Seattle. <laughs> and so that was demo number two. So you make the call on Gemini's behalf. And then demo three was using a different type of Cloud Run resource. There's, server, there's um, Cloud Run services, but there's also Cloud Run jobs. And a, jo a Cloud Run job just runs a container or a, uh, the code to completion. And so I showed how they use different non-Gemini specific uh, Vertex AI APIs in that demo. Wonderful, okay, and just to give folks at home maybe a little bit of the background, what is serverless and what are the benefits of it? Yeah, sure, so uh, serverless is where, I would think of it as like you outsource your SRE or your DevOps to Google. So where you get to focus on your application development and uh, your performance monitoring, and we will take uh, care of auto scaling up if you have more traffic, or scaling down, like if you're like me, you're experimenting, you're prototyping, you put, it, you spin up an instance, but then you don't, you can just forget about it because after 15 minutes of idle time, uh, Cloud One will spin down that instance based on traffic. Oh, got it. Okay, okay. So then. Uh in terms of using Cloud Run, you know, yeah. a lot of people ask, where should I run my code? Yeah, yeah. So, so usually I always start with, well, okay, wh where are you? Where are you starting from? Like, are you comfortable with containers or not? If you're, let's say like you, you just have your code, and that was my first and second demo, uh, demos one and two, where I use build packs to show that you don't have to have a Docker file. We will containerize your code for you, so you can just bring your code. Uh, for, I think there's seven languages that are supported by build packs. In demo number three, I actually use a Docker file because I had to install a third party, or a third, um, third party binary, um, FFmpeg, for that, for that specific demo. But usually, yeah, I, I always like, like, are you comfortable with Kubernetes? If you are, check out GKE. Okay, wonderful. Okay, so if uh, folks want to watch maybe other sessions on serverless that have been happening at Next, what would you recommend? Yeah, so there's uh, there's what's new in Cloud Run, where they demoed this morning in the keynote the uh, app Canvas, where you can describe your architecture in actual language, and uh, it will produce not only a diagram um, of the, your architecture, but you can actually hit deploy, and it will actually deploy that. Yeah, so that was uh, my teammate Vitsa. So if you want to see this live. Go to his session and uh, stare in the PM for uh, Cloud Run. It's uh, it was called um, generative AI using LangChain with Cloud Run. Oh, yeah. But yeah, it was it was pretty cool. He asked, I, I want a Cloud Run at a service with uh, Cloud SQL, and then it, it generates a scaffold or it shows you what the architecture will look like. Then he says, give me a Cloud Run uh, a Cloud SQL, um, Cloud SQL. Give me a uh, I want to use uh, Gemini and then it wires up Gemini, or Vertex AI integration, and then you hit deploy, and it deploys it for you. Yes, oh, okay. Really cool. I did the manual way, because uh, I wanted to show step-by-step step, uh, what is going on when you're writing code. 
And I also want to just call out that um, everything I demoed in my talk, I have a step by step by step guide in the code labs. So I told my audience, do not take notes, okay. take a screenshot of these QR codes. Everything is already taken care of you. Go to the code lab, you can start from scratch. Wonderful, okay, and we'll make sure to link those code labs in the description as well, so all of you can check those out. And okay, I'm gonna throw you a little bit of a curveball okay. here. Right. If uh, developers want to get started, you know, seamlessly integrate this into their workflow, what can they do? Can you tell me in 60 seconds or less? If you wanna get started with Cloud Run, you can go to the Cloud Console, and from there you will see how you can deploy an already uh, uh, created container image of the, the uh, Hello World uh, Happy Dancing Unicorn, <laughs> that is what I call it, and you can just go from there and get a feel of the auto scaling. I would say, yeah, start there in the Cloud Console, get an idea of the auto scaling, scaling up and down the knobs and dials that you can fine tune for yourself, and then you can do the source based deployments. Uh, it's kind of like the next step in our documentation so that you can get your own code uh, deployed. And then you could go from there from the, like continuous deployment, wherever you have your Git repo and so forth. Wonderful. Thank you so much for chatting with us, Sarah. Yeah. And have a great rest of your yeah. next. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you.